my name's Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we have a really special project. I'm launching a new series of very template-driven classes. So what's exciting about this that we've never really been able to offer before um, is that we are actually going to sell this piece right here to you. So I, what you will receive in the mail will be a traced out canvas that's all ready to go. So that is amazing. Yay! All right, so this is what we have at class, and we've never really had this before online. And so this really helps make the process a lot easier. So basically what you will do is, I've got ordering information down below. Uh, so click and everything, you can find all the information there. And in fact, all of my helpful hints are going to be in the description of the video. So you'll find um, like what kind of brushes I use or what kind of paints I use. Uh, and then of course, ordering information for uh, this particular piece as well. So that's really gonna be helpful. So we don't even have to worry about talking about how to set all this up. It's going to be done for you, so that's amazing. All right, so now to go ahead and get started with everything else, I'm gonna talk about the tools that we'll be using. Uh, so I always use my little family of brushes, and I have Big Daddy, and then I have Mama, and then I have Little Buddy, and then I have Little Bit. So as you hear me refer to them during the class, that's our little family. All right, and then I wanna make sure that you've got all, everything that you need. So we've got you know, just paper towels um, or an old rag is fine. And then you wanna make sure that you've got paper plates nearby. And then of course, a bucket of water, all right? And then paint, paint is also very important. All right, so we're gonna have lots of paint nearby. So I'm going to have, for this particular painting, um, I'm going to have red, cobalt blue, white, black, green, and gold. And of course, all that information is in the description. All right, so to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and load up my plate here with all the paint that I need. I'm gonna start first with uh, just my background color. That's how I start all my paintings. So I'm gonna start with some cobalt blue and then I'm gonna do some white, all right? And then, let's see, some green, a little bit of green here. All right. And then to start with, I always start with my big daddy usually because I'm doing large area in the background here, but I need to mix these up first. So what I'm going to do is I actually just use a dry brush uh, typically, for my classes, I'm using like a student grade acrylic paint, um, so I don't add any water to it. And uh, so what I do is, this is again, Big Daddy dry brush. I do make sure the brush is kind of nice and uh, flexible. All right, and then I'm going to pick up, there's a big dollop there, a big dollop there, and then a little bit smaller on the green. So let's go little corner of the brush, or think of it more like a pea size amount. And then I'm gonna mix all that together. And that right there gives me almost just a perfect turquoise that I'm looking for. Now that's perfect to me, but you may want something very different. And you're always welcome to kind of adapt and change here so you can keep going. If you want a lighter, brighter sky, then you can add a lot more white into the mix, just like that. And then the other thing that I like to do is I like to have a lot of white nearby so that I've constantly got to uh, have that fun highlight to pull into the mix. All right, so I've got my Big Daddy brush all loaded up here and that turquoise paint mixed up. And again, that was big dollop of white, big dollop of blue, and then just like a little pea size amount of the green. I mixed all that together. All right, and so it's ready to go. And then I'm gonna start to paint this into the background. And then as I work this back and forth, I'm also going to pick up a little bit of this pure white paint and I'm gonna push that back and forth. So it looks like there's like a little bit of cloud cover running through the sky, which is a nice touch, okay? And then as I'm working into the background, you wanna make sure that as much as possible, your brush is parallel to the canvas. And so you'll hold the brush, you'll hold the brush. There's my honey bear. Are you filming? I am. My honey bear who makes 
all this magic is coming into the space. He does make all this magic. He makes all these templates, so that's what's really amazing. Sure you're, uh, still going? Well, you're, yeah. You're still going, but your and your sounds still going. Say, my husband is so sexy. My husband is so sexy. Yeah, it's still working. <laughs> Sound is still working. All right, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to keep pushing in this white into the background. Now we're about to get to the part where we're going to have to start to cut in around the shape that we traced. So then we have to change up our MO a little bit. So we're going to shift gears from flat side of the brush, which gives us really great coverage. Because again, that allows that flat side to face the canvas. Then we have to hold the brush a little bit differently. So then we hold it more like we'd hold a pencil. So then that handle's coming out towards us like this. So then I'm going to hold it more like a pencil, and then that gives me a nice thin line edge that comes around that shape. Just like that. And that really gives you a lot more control. And then another little tip here too is that as you're using this brush, and this takes a little bit of time uh, if you do this step that I'm about to say, but sometimes what happens is, see you can see the end of the brush, see how it's getting filled with paint and it's starting to spread, the bristles are starting to spread, and I'm losing that nice thin line. I'm losing a little bit of my precision and control with this brush. So what I have to do is, sometimes I have to take a break and I have to take it and I have to rinse it out a little bit in the water. So I'm going to set some of that paint free. I'm going to swish the brush around, circle it, uh, apply a little bit of pressure to the bottom of the bucket, and as I spin it around, that helps release that paint. Now, really important, before I start to go paint again, it's really important that I dry off my brush, or else you'll end up getting what looks like mascara runs that will come down your canvas. And those are kind of challenging to deal with, so we'd rather do not deal with that and just use prevention on this. And I want to show you the difference it makes. It's really amazing. So I just washed out this brush and this is such a cool brush because see you can hold it like a pencil and you've got this thin line like that or you've got over to the flat side you've got a nice thick line. So it's it's pretty cool how it can be very versatile and do those different things for you. Alright so I'm gonna go back to holding it over to the side and then, you know, what else is kind of fun, too, is you can sometimes dip into another color in your sky. So, like, there's some of that cobalt blue. That's really kind of nice. I can dip into some of that, too. As long as the paint is still wet, uh, you can kind of touch into that wet paint. Uh, and with acrylic paint, you've got about five-ish to ten minutes max. Uh, it starts to set up on you pretty quickly, so you do have to, if you are going to start to mix in different colors, then you need to do that pretty quickly. Or you can just kind of continue to rework the whole thing, too. So I'm going to keep coming in here and pushing in a little bit of white every now and then. And sometimes I want something more dramatic, so I'm going to push into a little bit more white. And so you kind of push that back into the sky. Let's do another one. And again, that's working so well because my turquoise is still all set up and, and still a little bit wet. And so it's able to easily uh, blend back and forth into that. And I'm needing to mix up a little bit more turquoise. So I'm gonna pull into my blue and my green and my white and just kind of swish it round and round and round. All right, and then I'm gonna keep pushing this back and forth. And then I've got to cut in a little bit here. And if you are feeling a little bit just like, man, Big Daddy is too much for me, you can do Little Buddy. Okay, so I've got Little uh, Buddy right now. All right, and um, I'm going to work into these smaller areas in here. Okay. So if you need a smaller brush, switch over to Little Buddy. He's a great tool. And you can still hold him like a pencil, get into those smaller areas. And what's cool, he still has a flat. So he has a flat side to him, so you can hold it over to the side, just like that, too. And it does feel kind of awkward and strange to hold a brush out to the side. 
but what's happening is that awkwardness, that's part of what helps give you a nice gentle hand so that you're not applying too much pressure to this background here. And that's also what's giving you really nice coverage over the surface. All right, so I'm coming back in. Remember to keep kind of dipping back into that white and also picking up some of that turquoise. Okay, uh, so ta-da, there's our beautiful sky. All right, next up we are going to do our beautiful snow. This particular painting is going to be for Christmas. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? And um, let me just say I'm going to be doing others just like this that will show you kind of a fun neutral background where it can be all year round. Uh, or we'll do like a spring scene or we can do like the snow scene. So uh, this is a really versatile canvas. You can do lots of different things with this. But for this particular time, we're going to go ahead and do snow. All right, so for snow, put my brush in water. Make sure you always put your brushes back in the water. And then next up, we are going to, I'm going to come back in with Big Daddy. All right, and then I want some white paint and just a teeny little bit of black. Very small amount of the black here. All right, let's see. So I've got a lot of white, and I mean, when I say a little bit of black, I mean, you just barely take your brush, barely touch a little corner into it, and that's all you need. And see how that just gives it all the shadow that you need. Because we do want to keep our snow mostly white, but we do want a little bit of that uh, heather gray, a little bit of lightness in there. But again, don't get too heavy handed with it because the thing I notice a lot in my classes is that people always put too much black in and the snow becomes extremely dark. Now you can still save it if that happens by just coming in with a lot of white and I'll show you how to do that too. In fact, you know, like I'll just start dark as, so I can show you. So a lot of people go that dark to begin with. That's very common. I see that a lot. So still very salvageable though. Just give your brush a quick wipe on a paper towel. Wiped it off a little bit. Came in with lots of just pure white paint and then I start to work that in back and forth. See and it's now you're left with a nice shadow in there and it's still working. And then you can come back in, again, a little bit of black is nice, just a tiny amount, but just be very sparing with it. Just get a tiny amount to begin with. And it's awesome for that, like at the top part here. Okay, I'm using that line edge now for the top part. And then up here, top part, a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna come in with a lot more white when I come in underneath. And just keep pushing that back and forth. And see how some of that black is just kind of running in, you know, it's just kind of random. And that's actually an awesome thing. Okay, we, we like the randomness of that. And then I can even create a little bit of some random hills by just kind of lightly taking a little bit more my line edge, see, and just kind of run a little bit of that black through there kind of soften it up. See, it just looks like there's a little bit more of a, you know, gradation to the ground lines happening, a little bit of variation there. It's kind of nice. Um, I can also maybe make a little bit more of a hill up here. And that may happen on, on accident, which is kind of, you know, happy accident. Good job. So we have a little bit of that coming up. And then just make sure you kind of blend back into it with your white and then take it all the way across. All right, and see that's a little bit too dark. No worries, kind of just push right back into it with some of that white. And then you kind of just keep lightly going back and forth. Just kind of play with it. Again, this is all supposed to be very, very relaxing. So just keep going back and forth, just kind of work it. And even if you, you know, you can keep reworking it. 
too. So that's a nice thing too. I love acrylic paint. There's, there's a lot of flexibility to it while it's still a very fast, quick medium too. All right, so I am going to start with a lot of red. You definitely want to pre-mix this on your plate first uh, because black is so overpowering and so a little bit goes a very long way. So I'm, again, barely dip into the corner. You see how small that is? I mean, so tiny. And then I'm going to push that into the red, and that was just all I needed right there. And that takes me to that level of depth with the red. That's where I want to be right there. All right, so I'm going to be working this into the background. Now, red is very tricky, especially when you're working with a student grade paint or if you've got like, you know, if you went to the grocery store and bought some paint. Um, here's what's tricky about red. And I'm going to show you on a plate first. So you'll see what I'm talking about. It is very challenging. So our natural hand, we have a tendency to hold the brush towards us like this. And so when you do that with red, it gives you a heavy hand and you're digging into the paint a lot and it makes it very transparent. All right, and so this is very typical. I see this all the time in my classes. So that's what happens. Now how we correct that um, is largely through technique. So then what I do is I keep my same brush, I load up with a large amount of paint on one flat side, see there's quite a bit there, and then I hold that brush out to the side. So see that handle's not coming towards me, it's out to the side, and it's parallel to the canvas, and you can see how dramatic that is, big difference there, and all I did was change how I held the brush. Um, now, if you are a super perfectionist and you have, you want to spend a little bit more time with this and you want you know, just an extreme amount of depth with your red, then of course you can also do a primer coat of a very dark charcoal gray and that's another option too. Uh, but if you're okay with how that looks and you know, this is what I'm gonna go ahead and teach today is this right here and then so I've got this worked up here, and then I'm going to just continue on with that stroke going all the way across. And again, this is just red and tiny amount of black coming in here. Just remember to keep turning your brush over to the side. This will keep giving you good coverage with this red. All right, and we're getting into smaller areas in here too. So at some point, it might make you feel a little bit more comfortable to switch over to your Little Buddy brush. All right, so again, this is Little Buddy, or Mama's another option too. All right, here's Mama. And then you can load it up, same way. Make sure and get that premix here, because Smaller brush grabs more paint, sometimes it gets a little bit dark on you. All right, so we're all ready to go. And then see, with little buddy, I'm able to get into a smaller area in here. And I can also still continue to do that really nice trick where the brush, the flat side of the brush is still over on the side. But you will notice, because it is a much smaller brush, you're gonna notice, notice a lot more um, brush strokes happening. And the only way to really smooth that out is to come back in with a larger brush and just try to work in there as best you can you know, for the broad strokes in those sections there. And then what's nice is you do have a little bit of playroom here when you cut in around these windows. These windows are going to be black. Uh, so even if you oopsie a little bit and cut in a little bit over the line, uh, you're going to be working in with the black inside, so it's very, it's a real easy fix on that. And then even the roof line is, it's going to be gold, which is obviously a lot lighter, but if you wait for it to set up and dry, uh, it has really great coverage on that too. All right, see it's getting, 
getting to be small in here, so we're going to shift gears and kind of work it more like we'd hold a pencil. And see, I'm holding the brush more like a pencil, so the first thing you're going to notice is it's getting paint thinning out on me. So for the first coat, it's okay. I need, the, I, I, I need this precision right now, so I need to go ahead and hold it like this to get that first line in there. So that's all right. And then I'm going to be able to go back in over the top here in just a moment uh, to get the coverage that I need. See, so I've got some thinness happening in there. Come back in with a larger brush, and then I'll just rework as close as I can over the top here. And then if it's a really small area, like it gets a little challenging in here, so you just take the side of the brush and just kind of lightly touch in over the top, but make sure that brush is back over to the side. All right, so I've got all my red in here, and now I'm gonna to start to work into the black areas. Little Buddy, and we're going to be working into the little windows and the doorways in here, and you really wanna make sure that your brush is nice and dry for this, because we've got black, and that mascara run, or what looks like it, becomes very real if you still have any excess water in here. All right, so I've got my Little Buddy brush, all right, I'm going to go ahead and push back and forth into the black here. Now what's nice about the black too is it naturally has a lot better coverage to it and so there's no, uh, there's not as much concern about how to hold the brush. Um, I mean, same rules apply if, you're, if you are experiencing a little bit of transparency, turn it over to the side, but for the most part it's much easier to work with here. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a thin line just going across here now. I am now going to come in with my gold roof line, but I would encourage you to just pause the video and just go ahead and let it set up and dry before you come back in and do the gold. And the reason why is because when, you know, as you kind of touch next to it, if you start to touch into that red and pull it in, it's going to give you a pink roof uh, because that's what's going to happen when the cream starts to blend with uh, the red. So it's, it's easier on you to go ahead and just give yourself a little bit of pause, get something to drink, and then come back. Uh, so, all right, next up, let's go ahead and mix up cream. All right, so I'm going to take a big dollop of white, a little dollop of the gold, and I'm going to make this really pretty cream color. All right, so and on this bigger section here, I can use the Mama brush. Okay, this is a little bit bigger brush here. And then what's fun is I can also touch just a teeny amount of white in there. And that just gives some nice little highlights. Now we're starting to get near the edges, so, and we're starting to get into really small areas too. So I'm going to be switching over to my little buddy brush, because I don't want to get too close and, and have a little run in, because my red is still wet, and I don't want to run into that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and let go of Mama and start to use little buddy, and then I can angle the brush a little bit to give me more control this way. You can also hold the brush more like a pencil. You can make that line edge go right across the edge like that. And then right up here like this. 
and then across. And then I'm going to start to work into the roof line here too. So the nice thing is the little buddy brush is just the perfect size to go right into that area. And so again, this is just a mix of gold and white. All right, so now this is a beautiful thing. We're at this level to where we have all of our background painted in. Okay, this is that stage of the painting where I call the color blocking, so that's an awesome thing. And this is where I recommend that we take a little bit of a break and we let all of this set up and dry. You want to allow it about 15 minutes set up and dry time, and then when we meet back, we're going to work on all of that detail work. So that's going to be uh, doing all the outlines, uh, fun pattern work that comes in over the top. So take a break, go get a glass of wine, and then we'll meet back in about 15 minutes. All right, uh, so our next step here is going to be to do all of our wonderful outlining. And then we can even do some fun uh, white detail work over the top. So uh, I'm gonna start with the outlining first. And then here's what's interesting about this is that I actually try to use the biggest brush that I can. And so I try to use my Big Daddy brush, and here's why. You can see edge of the brush. If it's nice and clean and dry, or, you know, damp, but anyway, you get it. Uh, real thin on the edge. And that's a really long line, so it's, it's really nice. The other tool that's super handy is, of course, Little Buddy's also a great tool. And so I can do a lot of my black outline work with that. Anytime I have a longer line, I try to do that. If it gets to be kind of curvy and a smaller space, then I come in with my little bit brush. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the biggest brush, and I'm going to try to do as much of the big line work that I can. So I'm going to push back and forth into the black paint. All right, and I'm in good shape here. You can see how thin it is. That's important, because if it's very thick and, and the bristles are doing this and being squirrely, that's not gonna work. You're gonna, don't, don't proceed if that's the case. You need to make sure it's nice and thin, just like that. And then you can just take this, see all the way across, and that's a beautiful thing. That's very helpful to be able to knock out those lines just like that. vertical lines too. And see there's a lot we can get done with this bigger brush. Now we're getting a little bit of a curve in here. So you know what, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush so I can have a little bit more control. So I've got my little buddy now. And he's clean, dry. I'm going to press back and forth into the black paint, nice and thin. And see, I can work around that little curve in there. And that gives me a little bit more control in there. And something else that I do that helps me a little bit too, if you're having a little bit of an issue with um, keeping your hands steady, um, what I can do, so, sometimes what I like to do is I like to rest the weight of my hand on my pinky and that kind of acts like a little training wheel, uh, helps keep my hand steady and I can also kind of help, I can just keep that on the canvas and that helps, you know, guide my hand through there. At least for a little while in there and it's, it's really helpful when you're doing some of the detail work that we'll get to here in just a few moments, but uh, for right now, still doing this outline work here. And then the other thing that I'm going to start to work in now is I'm going to start to work in uh, the little lines that come through that give that impression 
of like an old distressed barn wood happening. So I've got mama or you can use your big daddy brush. And I want one line just kind of coming across here, so. All right, and then you can soften it up a little bit too with a little bit of, you know, if you want to come back in and soften it with a little bit of the red, you certainly can. Just kind of come up and just barely kind of touch right up next to it. Then I can also do a few little vertical lines that come down, and I don't want, I don't want to be just too precise and have really long continuous lines. I want to break it up a little bit, so I'm just going to, you know, make a little stroke down like that, just kind of lightly do it with my brush here. So you just need a little bit here and there, just like that. So I'm coming in with little bit. When I go to load this up, I want to do a little twist. All right, so I twist it between my fingertips, just like that. All right, that loads it up, but it also twists it into a nice fine point. And then this is what I'm going to use to do the little detail work. All right, just like that. I'm going to do a few of these little flags here on this side. So I'm going to do, let's see, how do we do this? I'm going to do a little curve just like that. And let's do one more. Okay. And then I'm going to do little triangles off of this. So this is kind of a fun little decorative look to do. Again, just lots of little triangles in here. All right, it's kind of a fun little detail there. Let's say we want a little heart above the door. That's kind of a fun little accent. All right, so I'm just going to go right here and do just a fun little heart. All right, so there's another little trick that I like to do, which is super fun and easy and allows you to do polka dots or dots wherever you want to do them. And I use the wooden handle of the brush, and so I can just dip into the paint, see, just like this. All right, so there it is. Okay, very fun, easy. And then I just press straight forward, and boom, there it is, nice. And again. All right, so that's kind of a fun little detail coming out on each side of the heart. And then I can continue on and do, I talked about that little arrow a while ago, so I'm going to finish that up. I'm going to keep my brush thin, so remember to keep kind of twirling it into the paint. All right, and then we're going to just do one little tiny line there. can just do a little diagonal line out on each side. Okay, very fun. So we're getting lots of fun little details in there. Tiny things, one little step at a time here. And if you want to do a little bit more with window work, you certainly can. Uh, like for example, let me just show you real quick. So you can do like another little line in the middle, maybe another line coming down through the center. Okay. Very fun. All right, and let's see what else. Um, um, I think I'm actually going to do a wreath. I think I'm going to do a little wreath here. 
Hey, Joe, do you have a washer handy? So I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna do a little washer in here for a circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my washer, place it down here, okay? I'm gonna trace around this, and my paint's all dry, so now I can come back in with my Sharpie. All right, and there's my circle, that is awesome. All right, so I need uh, my little buddy brush now and just some green and white paint. So I'm gonna start with a nice big dollop of green. Let's tap in some of that white there. Let's mix those two together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, tap, tap, tap. This is that little fun little pounce effect where I just kind of lightly tap on the side of the brush. And I'm gonna tap all the way around that circle. And this is going to give me my little leaf. Doesn't have to be perfect because wreaths are kind of organic, natural things. All right, so that's a cute little wreath. All right, I need a little bit now, and I'm going to do that same trick where I use the end of the brush. All right, so I've got a little bit, and I'm going to use the end of the brush trick, and I'm going to dip into the white paint. All right, so wooden handle, and then I'm going to dip straight forward and I'm just going to sprinkle those little dots all the way around. Just kind of randomly place them on either side as I do this. All right, see that's cute. Okay, very, very easy. That's the point of all this. We want to make sure they're nice and easy. All right, and I can add a few little white highlights if I want. So I'm coming back in with my little bit brush. Okay, and I'm going to do just a nice little touch of white. Just kind of lightly come in through here. And I do kind of, you know, lift off a little bit. I don't want one long continuous line. Again, it's just a little bit of a highlight. So I'll kind of do that across here too. All right, that's all I need there. And let's see. All right, so I'm gonna come back in. I'm feeling like looking over it all. I feel like maybe I want a little bit more happening down here, a little bit more shadowing. Uh, so I'm gonna come back in with just a teeny amount of this black and the white. A little bit of that charcoal happening here. And then I just wanna And then last details will be lettering. Okay, so people get a little bit nervous about lettering. And here are some very helpful tips. I always encourage people to keep their natural hand and do their natural handwriting. We have this attraction to trying to make sure that everything is just so perfect. But there's something I think very beautiful about somebody's own personal handwriting. And even if it's very unique or strongly stylized. Uh, what helps ground it is a nice straight line. So this usually helps people feel a little bit better about their handwriting, a ruler. So if you take your pencil, all right, and uh, let's say I wanna write the, you know, there's lots of different options here. Um, you could do Merry Christmas, uh, you could say Happy Holidays, you could do your family name, um, there's all kinds of fun things you could put in here. Um, I've seen all kinds of stuff in my class. Um, you, you know, like if it's a family farm, it could be one simple monogram if you really want to make it really easy on yourself. Uh, but the main thing that really helps is a ground line. So if you take your ruler and you go ahead and make some line marks, just very lightly, knowing that 
tomorrow, you're gonna wait, give it a day. Tomorrow you, you can come back and you race. All those pencil lines will erase as long as your paint's all nice and dry. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little line right about here. Okay, and then I'm gonna make another little line here. That's straight. Okay. All right, so that gives me some groundwork uh, for where I wanna do this. The next thing that's really important is to go ahead and write it out with a pencil. And I think this is huge, very important, because when you do start to paint, a lot of times, you know, the bristles fan out, it gets a lot bigger. There's, you're really, uh, you're really winging it and it's pretty risky because you could, and I've even done this before, where you, you get overconfident but you run out of room and you literally do not finish your word and then you're having to repaint all the background and start over. So this way, you can plan it out with your pencil, you know it works and fits into the space, you're happy with it gives you a lot of confidence, you can breathe, and then you can just follow along with your paint. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and write out Merry Christmas, okay. Nice, Merry Christmas, there it is. All right, now, when I go to load up this little bit brush, I am going to twist it into the paint just like that. All right, that gives me a nice fine point. And then I'm gonna to start to go ahead and paint over my pencil lines here. So, and this is, remember me telling you about how you can use your pinky in an area too, so this helps guide your hand. Now this is a little bit, uh, so little bit is small and it runs out of paint very quickly. And so sometimes you're gonna to have to go back over this whenever you're done. And do a second coat. Ta-da! All right, see, so we've got a little bit of dry brush action happening here, so of course I'm gonna come back in over the top. Okay. All right, so you can see where the lines are still coming across, and that's okay. We can erase that tomorrow. And then my very final step is to sign my masterpiece. So I'm gonna take my little bit brush, black, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just sign my masterpiece right in here. And you can also do this with a Sharpie too, so. I'm done, and it's beautiful. And you can make this too if you order my beautiful template that is already traced out for you on a canvas. And all the information is down below. Just click on it, go to tipsyartist.com, and all the magic is there for you.